This hobby is not always expensive and frustrating. In this video I want to show you a few pieces of equipment that seem cheap and insignificant, but are indeed cheap and very helpful. My name is Tim and this is Astro Addict. It does not matter if you're using star alignment or plate solving, a red dot finder will find your stars in seconds. And a fun side effect looking through this red dot on your scope, it almost looks like you're shooting it. While setting up with star alignment, you need to center two to three stars in the field of view of this telescope. Well, not this one, but any other you have. The problem is, the first star will be way off. And lying underneath the scope in winter, trying to figure out where the hell this is pointing. I've done it before, and I don't want to do it again. If your guide scope is mounted on the main telescope, and not in the finder scope bracket, you can always leave the red on there and have it ready to be used if anything in your process fails. Which will happen eventually. Even my plate solving software fails from time to time. And going to the next star in a matter of 5 seconds can save your night. We all know it, we all love it. Achieving focus has never been easier. This little thing should be part of any proper astro gear, if you have a telescope, that is. It's available for every type of telescope, and some manufacturers even include it in the dust caps. Very helpful, definitely. Before imaging your object, you want to be sure that the focus is spot on. But a live view focus with a DSLR through a telescope? Forget it. You won't see anything. With the Batnov mask on there, you will have a visual feedback on how good your focus is. Not that a star is not a visual feedback, but you get what I mean. In the night, I use a sequence of 10 second exposures. 10 seconds pause to adjust the focus, and after maybe 3 and 4 tries, the imaging can begin. And fun fact, if you have a 3D printer available, making these things couldn't be easier. You can download files all over the web. This one cost me about 2 euros. And it fits my telescope perfectly. Especially in winter, the one thing you never want to happen is dew. You go outside to check, real quick, because it's cold. And you see that the guide scope and the main scope are covered with dew, because it's cold. And you start to curse, because it's clear. And clear nights are colder than cloudy ones. With my Astro Weather app, I check if the dew point will be reached in that night, and I prepare the dew heater. These bands will be stripped around the lens elements of your telescopes, guide scope and main scope, because you also want guiding in the night. These bands heat the glass by just a few degrees and keep the water away. And now you might say these bands are not cheap. You will need a dew heater controller and a power source, which has one of these weird and outdated car jack outputs. Well, you're in luck, because these bands now also come with a USB cable. I don't have one yet, because I can use these ones. You may only need a USB hub to keep the dew away. And the imaging nights will be way better. This little black adapter changed the way which I set up and image from the first day it arrived. I know many of you own a Skywatcher mount, maybe even the HQ5. It can be computerized, enabling features which I cannot miss anymore. Plate solving, an automatic star alignment, dithering, noise reduction while imaging, and improved auto guiding. Connecting your mount with a PC with this cable and this adapter will make your nights much more enjoyable. I only learned about it recently and it saved me a lot of money and it will save a lot of money in the future. Let's talk about filters. Most of the dedicated cameras have very small sensors. A 2 inch filter is way too overkill, 1.25 inch is enough. But how do we get a 1.25 inch filter in a 2 inch focus tube? 2 inch filters are way more expensive than the smaller versions. Saving this money can enable you to do many things in the hobby. With this one. Here we have a 2 inch filter drawer and here we have a 1.25 inch filter. And now, the thing that I learned just recently. This ring right here can save you that lot amount of money. Simple as that, a filter adapter. I use it in my filter drawer and now I can use both 2 inch and 1.25 inch filters with the same equipment. Awesome. Money saved, divorces prevented.
The headlamp is the last awesome piece of astro equipment, really? I think many people underestimate how big of an influence this small thing really is. Many people take it as granted that a red light can sit right on top of their heads, ready to be used. Astronomers use a red light because it does not affect the dark adaption of your eyes. Using a flashlight for astroimaging or astronomy itself, unimaginable. Say goodbye to seeing stars, annoy the neighbors and always, by mistake, shine into the telescope. It can't get any worse. Going out there without a lamp is maybe possible in a bottle 6 and up, but if you have a small withdrawn backyard, you will need a red light. Out there with a telescope, have you ever looked at the laptop screen, wanted to enter some values, look down and... F Plus, if you visit a star party, only red light is allowed. Unless you want a group of drunk astronomers chase you through a pitch black forest. I hope at least some of these things were new to you and will help you to get your imaging more enjoyable and the images better. They may not cost that much, but improving the outside experience is very important to make this overall thing more enjoyable. May the night be with us.